everybody. Welcome to another episode of GSB TV Customer Service. My name is Rachel Baker. I'm joined here with Chris Barnes. Um, today we're going to cover an article that was featured on the GSB blog titled The Six D's of Creating a Customer-Centric Culture. Uh, this was written by Shep Hyken, who is one of the uh, lecturers for the Tarkadin Certificate and Entrepreneurship Program. So any of you that are participated will recognize Shep's work with customer service. Uh, he is a New York Times and Wall Street Journal best-selling author, and wor he works with companies and organizations who want to build loyal relationships with their customers and employees. Uh, so I picked this article out in particular. I thought it'd be a great one to cover with you guys today. And Chris is going to start with the first D. Absolutely, and the first D is to define. Uh, define basically what customer service means to you and your company and so when we're talking about defining uh, one of the examples that he uses is Ace Hardware. Uh, they put it right out there for the public to see. Uh, Ace Hardware, the helpful hardware place. So he says the key word right there is helpful. Uh, it evokes an, an emotion and a, uh, a word that the client, the public can see and say this is the place I want to go because they focus more on being helpful and providing better customer service. The one that I was just recently exposed to was at Southwest Airlines. Uh, here in Atlanta, Georgia, we have Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. And uh, all over their terminal, they say, we put the heart in Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. And so they actually have uh, customer service kiosks. Place where, places where you can get free soft drinks, beverages, coffee, tea, candies, things like that. Putting themselves out there, not only in words, uh, but out in front of the public, providing great customer service and a great customer experience. The second D. All right, the second D is disseminate. Basically, you wanna broadcast um, your values, what you've defined. Um, you don't wanna keep it a secret, so you wanna train your employees um, you want to train all of your staff, so make sure you're all on the same page um, as far as what your core values are and how you want to broadcast that um, to your customers. So an example that Shep used was with Ritz-Carlton, they actually have laminated cards with all of their important core values on it so that the employees carry it around with them, um, they can remember, they can show their customers. So you definitely want to disseminate, you want to broadcast it, you don't want to keep it a secret. Absolutely. So once we've disseminated it and we have it there, now it's a matter of deploying it. So deploy is the third D. And what he says here is that it holds true to everyone in the organization. Once you've disseminated it, it can't just be for the frontline employees. It needs to filter through all the way up to management and back on down. So it's a matter of putting that service promise out there, not only for the, the baseline employees that are in front of the customer, but it goes all the way up to management. Yes, and then once you, do, once you deploy, you have to demonstrate it. So it's not just for um, you as the customer service rep, but also the leaders. You have to demonstrate everything that you've uh, taught, what you've learned, and you have to show firsthand. So a good example would be, uh, you know, I head up customer service here, and even though we have a, a team of amazing support reps that take calls every day, I like to take calls at least, uh, you know, a few times a week, if not more, on speakerphone and have all of the customer service reps listen to me while I'm actually demonstrating firsthand all of the values and everything that our company stands for and how we want to treat our customers. So you always have to demonstrate how you want um, to treat your customers and what the message is that you want to convey to them. And Rachel does a terrific job of that, folks. Uh, one of the things that's also interesting is the way you set up your office, being able to hear uh, people in management on calls, providing great customer service, and you will find that the people who are within earshot, they will learn from that. So the fifth D is to defend. Uh, what we're talking about here is upholding the promises that you've made to the customer, being able to reinforce uh, what, you're, what you're saying and just basically jump right in if needed. So uh, basically in, in my position here, uh, we hear a lot of folks on the phones interacting with customers, clients, whatever it might be. 
from a management standpoint, sometimes you need to uh, keep one ear open and kind of hear what the employees around you are doing. Uh, if you're able to provide any additional insight as to maybe things that they can do right there on the spot, uh, you can text them, you can IM them, you can email them while they're on the phone, you can stand in the doorway and give them little signals to be able to provide uh, even better customer service and support. Uh, but uh, you have to do it in a constructive way. You don't want to make them feel like they didn't do their job great, uh, that uh, they did things wrong. Uh, be able to provide uh, very, very good insight and suggestions as to things that they might be able to do better and learn from in the future. Yeah, so that leads us into our final D, which is delight. So you want, you want to recognize all of your customers who, uh, I'm sorry, all of your customer service representatives who have done a great job. Um, you know, they kind of go hand in hand, defend and delight. Uh, because there might be somewhere where you see, okay, they could have improved uh, better on this part, but they did extremely well on this part. So every time that I review an email or an online chat or even listen in on a phone call, after it's done, I first, you know, want to acknowledge where they did great, where they excelled in. And then also, in turn, you can talk about, well, you know, instead of saying this to the customer, you could have said this. So that positive reinforcement. So you always want to celebrate your success with your company and make sure that um, they know that they're doing a good job. So there's a number of different things you could do when you're, you know, celebrating. You can have certain award programs or maybe take your team out. Um, you know, for dinner after work. What I do is I have something called the Baker Bucks. So I have all these different fun um, incentives for my support team when they do a good job. So five points if you, uh, you know, did a great email interaction where you had an upset customer to where you were able to turn it around. Or 10 points if you were able to prevent a cancellation through walking them through the, the software application. So once they hit that 100 Baker Bucks, they receive a $25 gift card or something like that. So having those fun, delightful rewards and actually you know, thanking them for what they're doing well um, goes a long way. And folks, the six D's of customer service, trust me, they're fun and they're easy to remember. But the fact of the matter is, is you have to remember, these are extremely important because these are going to help build your brand. And I'm going to throw another D out there and help differentiate you from the rest of the field. In many cases, we are not in an industry where maybe our product differentiates us but the way we treat people and the way we provide customer service will. Mm -hmm. So thanks again for joining us. We hope you'll join us back next week for another great edition of GSB TV. Have a great one. Thank you.